You're listening to Big World Network. Delroy vs. the Ishtari, Season 2, Episode 11, All in Good Taste. Written and read by Baron Stevens. I pulled the meat-flavored plant seed out of my pocket and showed it to the Ishtari queen and her surrogates. My hard shelled friends, this little seed here is the solution to all our problems. Minx translated. The queen didn't respond. She didn't even twitch an eye stalk. I forced the smile to remain on my face. I know it doesn't look like much, but believe me, this one seed could satisfy the palates of hundreds of you. After Minx finished the translation, the queen clicked something to a gigantic red-brown shelled Ishtari next to her. This one was almost as big as the one I defeated down on the planet. It shuffled toward me. I don't think they believe you, Minx said. I was getting that impression. I put my hand up in the intergalactic sign that meant stop. I can prove it. This is a quick grow seed. All I need is some dirt, light, and a little water. The queen clicked and the gargantuan guard paused, though it now loomed over me like a thundercloud ready to explode. It snapped its claws in disappointment. I had a hard time maintaining my smile. After swallowing and resetting my grin, I said, Minx, put the plant down. He did. Okay, now hold this light. I turned it back on as I put it into his arms. Next, I addressed my audience and held up the seed. I am going to plant this into the dirt, and you'll see that I'm telling the truth. I yanked the old plant out of the pot, threw it aside, and stuck the seed about an inch down into the dirt. Now, could one of you fine, noble warriors fetch me some water? Even after Minx translated, no one moved. Um, this won't work without water. Trust me, if this doesn't work, you can shish kebab me and munch on me to your heart's content. The queen clicked, and the giant Ishtari took another step toward me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I can do this without water. Just give me a minute. I stooped down next to the plant and started to spit. Or at least tried to. The queen clicked and the guard stopped only inches away from me. I bit my tongue a couple of times in order to try and get my mouth to water. My mouth had never been drier. I only managed to get a couple of little drops to spray out. Just a second. There's some in there somewhere. You can do it, sir. I have faith in your expectorating abilities. Minx said, sounding enthusiastic. I'm glad someone did, because I was beginning to lose mine. After working my mouth and tongue as hard as I could, I finally generated enough to cover the seed. At least I hoped it was enough as I stood back and waited. The Ishtari stared at me. I could see the queen getting ready to speak again, so I said, Wait for it. Nothing happened. Maybe it needs more water. I managed to generate enough saliva to drip a little more onto it. Still nothing. I tapped the grow light a couple of times before saying to Minx, Maybe it needs to be a little closer. Minx lowered the light. The queen grew more restless. If something didn't happen soon, I'd be a human burger for sure. A green sprout popped out of the seed and relief swept through me. The queen stopped fidgeting. The sprout soon grew taller and thicker, like a blade of grass. Within seconds, it reached almost three feet tall. It stopped growing and sat there. Normally, the seeds could grow a lot larger and with more stalks, but the lack of water limited its growth. I had to hope it was enough to pass the final test. I ripped it up by the roots and broke off the upper part. I started toward the queen. Tall, dark, and hardshell, along with several of his compatriots, formed a wall between me and her. Fellas, trust me, I mean no harm. I only want to give this sample to your most noble queen. Minx translated, but they still didn't move. Instead, one of the yellow shells came forward and snatched it from me. It put the end of the plant into its mouth and tasted it. While it chewed, my life flashed before me. If this failed, I was dead. All of my previous unsuccessful ventures came to mind in rapid succession. The yellow Ishtari didn't react one way or the other. After finishing its bite, it took the other half, walked through the guards, and handed it to the queen. She took it and tasted it. Sweat broke out all over me as she chewed the plant in what seemed like slow motion. She waved at me with a non-clawed hand. Forward, her orb said. I stood there, not sure what she meant. I think she wants you to approach, Mink said. The wall of guards parted so that I could go through. Uh, you sure about this? 
What's the worst that could happen? Minx asked. Some pretty bad things. I slowly approached the dais and stopped in front of the queen. Closer. I stepped up until I was two feet away. Closer. I took another step forward so that now my face was only about four inches from her eye stalks. Her tongue shot out and slapped into my face. The force of the blow knocked me backwards and to the floor. I lay there as a cold sweat broke out through my whole body. Nobody else had moved. The queen took another bite of the plant. She swallowed and seemed deep in thought. After another minute, her orb spoke. Want. More. All the stress and tension I'd felt the last few days came out of me at once. I let out a whoop and laughed. After getting up and jumping up and down a couple of times, I hugged the large brute next to me. I won't bore you with the details of the next hours of negotiations. Minx and I managed to get a contract set up that had me as giddy as a girl on a first date. It was all I could do to keep from giggling the whole time. I was about to become very, very rich, since the Ashtari had gold, platinum, and other precious metals in abundance. I had the patent and would be the exclusive distributor of the meat plant to the entire Ishtari Empire. And, as an added bonus, they vowed that they would no longer pursue humans for food. Evidently, they liked the taste of the plant better than us. Or me, at least. As Minx and I were escorted back to the life pod, I slapped him on the back and said, That, my friend, is what we call a win-win. If you say so, but I don't see how you can grow enough of the plant to satisfy their entire empire. No problem. I have a contact on an agricultural planet. When I explain the situation and give them a cut, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to change their crop to Delroy's Delectable Sprouts. Delroy's Delectable Sprouts? One of the upper LEDs on his screen rose. Okay, I'm still working on a name for them. What do you think? I'm trying not to. But won't the Ishtari eventually be able to create their own seeds from the plant? I leaned over and whispered to him. That's the beauty of this. The plants can only be grown from specially treated seeds, and I'm the only one who knows the chemical key to unlock it. I smiled and slapped him on the back again. We climbed into the life pod and waved a vigorous farewell to my new friends. For a bunch of invulnerable, human-eating warriors, they really weren't all that bad once you got to know them. We were soon launched back into space and heading toward the Ulysses. It took a while in the slow pod, but we finally docked at an airlock. I noticed that the cruise ship was also docked with the battleship, so I took it that the Ulysses was somewhat operational again. After we docked, I opened the door and jumped out. I opened my arms and waited for Stella to come running into them. Instead, she stood there next to General Tyson with her arms folded, with several armed marines positioned on each side. Smoke hung in the air as a repair crew rushed along the corridor to where the fire seemed to be coming from. Well, if she wasn't going to jump into my arms, I'd have to convince her that I deserved it. I am back and I bear good news. The war is over. I have saved the human race. You are all welcome to visit me in my orbital palace. Once I get it built, that is. What are you talking about? Stella asked as she slowly approached, her shoulders stiff. I've stopped the war. Didn't you hear me say that? They've agreed to stop eating us. You may now shower me with kisses of gratitude. She glared at me. Not happening. Higston, what lame-brained scheme are you up to this time? General Tyson asked. It's not a scheme, honest. I really did stop the war. Men, arrest this dunglehead, he said to the Marines behind him. He turned back to me. According to Earth Statute 949, you are hereby under arrest. You have once again stolen a ship that did not belong to you. You have the right to remain silent. If you don't, I'll knock your teeth out. Got it? Got it, I mumbled as two marines took my shoulders and escorted me back to the brig. been a presentation of Big World Network. Visit us on bigworldnetwork.com for more free weekly series or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for listening.
You're listening to Big World Network.